Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to talk about uh, our uh, tracking work on uh, four individuals, uh, black-tailed garbage we trapped from Eastern Mongolia. And uh, today I will talk about uh, Ottoman migration of uh, black-tailed garbage from Eastern Mongolia uh, to Sri, Link Sri Lanka and the Southern Asia tracked by GSM transmitter. So Mongolia uh, locates in, uh, in East Asia and um, it occurs in the three main uh, flyways and which is East Asian, Australian Asian flyway and Central Asian flyway and East Africa, West Asian flyways. So I would like to introduce briefly about Mongolia. So Mongolia is, uh, <clears throat> is located between China and Russia and Northern part of the country occurred, uh, covered by Southern forest of Siberia and Western part of the country is up covered by high mountains, Altai mountains, and southern part of the country is uh, covered by uh, the Gobi Desert, and eastern part of the country is covered by Manchurian grassland, which is uh, completely steep, and those are the main four uh, the habitat or ecosystem. And black-tailed godwits, uh, <clears throat> Uh, we have uh, two subspecies of uh, uh, godwits, uh, but uh, uh, in western part of the country, there could be the limoza subspecies, and another one is limoza, limoza, melanoroids, uh, which is the most common subspecies we have in the country. And this bird is also recorded in breeding in the northern part of the country and the habitat is uh, mostly grassy, marsh, uh, grassy uh, marshland and the box and the moorlands near to the big river banks, uh, river valleys. And also the more grassland depression in the, the eastern steppes in the north. So this is the work done at the uh, Chok Bird Research Station uh, which is the station uh, coordinated by Mongolian Bird Conservation Center. And uh, we have total 11 Ramsar sites and uh, Chokhleg is uh, located in the buffer zone of the Mongol Dawar Ramsar site, which is in the, you can see it in the more northeastern corner of the country. So today uh, I will talk about uh, tracking birds from this point. And little about our lake. This is a very small lake. So only radius is 2.5 kilometers. And we used the two sites to watch and count the shore birds. And from one side to another side, you can easy to see the which species are in other side of the lake by telescope. So this means um, uh, we can count all the species and all the birds in the lake one day. So this uh, small lake is, uh, I was mentioned, it's also uh, in, located in the buffer zone of the Mongol Tagur, and uh, this place is uh, nominated as several international areas, such as Northeast Asian Crane Site, and East Asian Australia Asian Flyway Site Network, and also Ramsar, and also important bird area. This, also, uh, this site is also uh, a state protected area, and in Mongolia, there are 58 species of shorebirds recorded. And out of uh, 36 of them uh, recorded in our Chokh Lake, and 31 of them is uh, ringed at the lake. So for garbage, uh, uh, we trap them using the mist nets and uh, we take the measurements, biometric measurements, and we ring and track. Now we use the combination color uh, blue or the green. So here I would like to show you the, our spring counts at the Chok Lake in last two years, and also autumn common counts at the Chok in last two years. And the spring counts, uh, 
this is our observation data. We counted uh, there's nearly 300 species in 2019 and uh, 2020, and um, it's um, around like 200 in the dust of black tailed garbage in, uh, in 2019. So the main active uh, period of the migratory godwits at the Chok Lake is uh, last two weeks of the May. And then early June, and the migration is actually finished. So in the fall, uh, autumn, so first, uh, first week of the August is the highest peak number we observed at the Chok Lake. Then the number is declined in the, in the mid of August. So in the last two years, uh, we ringed the uh, total 23 individuals of black-tailed garbits. Uh, 12 of them were juveniles. And this year, in 2020, uh, we ringed 31, and 20 of them were juveniles. So all of them were tracked, uh, uh, trapped in, in August. So uh, we tracked the uh, four of those uh, black tail garbits and the two adult birds and two juveniles, uh, juveniles from August. And uh, two adult, one was female, another was male. And uh, these birds were uh, trapped on first of June. And uh, we actually uh, identified the uh, sexes and age are uh, based on the the mostly bill lengths, and the, the longest and heavy bird it was uh, we identified as uh, female and another was male. So two juveniles also tracked uh, in August, and one was also female, another one was also male based on uh, biometric measurements. Uh, this tracking work actually completed under the special the trapping permission provided by Ministry of Environment of Mongolia. So tracking godwits, the four godwits. So we used the GSM based transmitter, which was a six gram and uh, two point, nearly 3% 3, uh, 3 of the whole body, body weight, uh, which thought it was, uh, was normal to fly. And the average uh, weight of the bird was uh, 20, 220 gram. And we preferred the, the glue and rope, lead wire, and string cable tube, and also ring uh, to, uh, to deploy the transmitters on the garbits. Uh, we deployed and attached the transmitter on the, on the ramp of the garbits. And because of, uh, you know, the, the, the shorebirds, so they, um, the, when, they, when they fly, and they're so flapping, and uh, it's, it's uh, not possible to use them on the back. So most important, uh, very important thing is uh, it's the best way to expose the solar panels to sunlight. And because we are av avoiding feather covering the panels surface to block the sun. So now you can see, this is only the auto migration and uh, the yellow and the reds are the two adult birds. The auto migration, they use the most west uh, flyways than uh, uh, most Western road than uh, you know, other two juveniles. Uh, the uh, green and the, uh, the pale pinks are the juveniles, uh, juveniles and they, they used uh, more in the East. So I will, now I would like to show you the more detail for adults. So now you can see the two adult birds migration and uh, both were tracked from our, our lake on early June, on the 1st of June. And uh, they spend uh, the the yellow bird. Uh, this is the L thirty fifty nine. Uh, this bird spent forty days uh, since we track uh, trapped, and then it started its uh, autumn migration on eleventh of July. Then uh, he reached the Tsinghua Lake, uh, Tsinghua Lake in China. And it's spent in, in another two weeks. So we think that it is a first stopover for this adult bird. Uh, then uh, this adult bird uh, 
left the Tsinghua Lake in China on the 25th of July, then reached to the Delta of Meghna River in southern Bangladesh. It was second stopover for this species, uh, this, uh, this individual. So then it, uh, it's also spent another two weeks in the, in the Bangladesh, and then uh, it started its, uh, the migration on uh, uh, mid-August and reached to the Sri Lanka. And uh, Sri Lanka was a winter site. A second uh, adult, it also used the same flyway, same road, same as, uh, as, uh, as before. And uh, it's also, they used the same stopovers in Tsinghua and also in Bangladesh, same places. And, but second bird moved to the east to head uh, lead to the Thailand and winter there. So this second adult also spent two weeks in Tsinghua and another nearly two weeks in also Bangladesh, then moved to the winter site in Southern Thailand. So our birds, um, our adult birds, we tracked from Northeastern Mongolia was, uh, was, was uh, quite a different route than uh, we seen we seen the birds that tracked from the Bahai uh, by the uh, Bingrunju. And so uh, now goes to the sec uh, next slide. Uh, this is about the juvenile birds. So we tracked two juveniles and uh, one juvenile used the more west than another one, but they had only one stop our, stop our sites during the autumn migration. So first, the stopover of the green line was uh, the uh, first bird was in in uh, southeast Mongolia. Spent there two weeks, uh, nearly twenty days, and then it's uh, migrated the uh, Loiko in southern Myanmar. And then uh, the first journal is spent in the winter time in southern Myanmar, in the Bay of Bengal. So. Uh, so that's uh, second uh, bird was. Uh, it's a uh, used the completely different uh, road than other three birds. Steve, this journal was directly fly to the Bohai, and they stopped there for uh, two weeks, uh, nearly two weeks. And it was actually the uh, we we identified that it was uh, the, uh, only the stop our site for this uh, journal and. Then it started uh, its uh, migration on 20th of September, and it's uh, reached to the uh, Gaogo of Eastern China. Then the last winter site was Jiaogunzhen uh, in Eastern China, and we had uh, the signal in the, in the 5th of December. So it was, uh, it was the at the winter side of the last juvenile. So uh, next slide, <clears throat> I just, uh, uh, I uh, talked about uh, the fall migration of those four individuals, but I would like to briefly introduce also the full migration of uh, one of our adult godwits we trapped, trapped. And so this L381, this adult, uh, uh, was uh, it had uh, two stop our sites during the migration. One was in Tsinghua and uh, Bangladesh, I mentioned before, and reached to the Thailand for wintering. Then you can see the, the blue line. This is the spring migration. So it's, it started its spring migration at the end of May. So we think that it was a non breeding bird because it started its migration on the end of May. Which is already, which should have already breeding site, uh, season, and so it's uh, uh, crossed the first. It uh, it crossed uh, Vietnam and reached to the central uh, Henan, and then uh, I think was was uh, uh, first stopover was uh, the Yangtze River in China. Then it crossed the Yellow River, then reached to the uh, Inner Mongolia. Then it. Uh, the last uh, breeding site was in northeastern Mongolia, but uh, it reached to the Dutch River, which is uh, nearly 50 kilometers from the trapping site. 
And uh, we think that uh, this bird is uh, probably the, the its uh, population is probably breeding in the north, more northeastern uh, the Dutch River along the Russian border. Uh, we were expecting it. So it was the um, the the current food, the migration of the one of our goblets. And so uh, nowadays we are working on the analysis of the uh, food migration of goblets. Uh, we have uh, received the signal so far. And so the conclusion, um, adult birds uh, from Eastern Mongolia used two stop our sites during autumn and used the same stop our sites and migrated through more west than juveniles and migrated the more longer than juveniles. Uh, the average longest uh, route was uh, 6,400 kilometer. And Tsinghua and uh, Tsinghua Lake and also Delta of Magna River in Bangladesh are important stop our sites for adults from Eastern Mongolia. And juveniles from Eastern Mongolia, they used the one stop our site during the autumn migration and used it different ways during their autumn and migrated through more east than adults and migrate more shorter than adults. Average uh, long, uh, average, uh, longest way was uh, uh, nearly uh, 4,000. So this is our uh, organizations we collaborate on the shore bird monitoring in Northeastern Mongolia. And uh, now I just uh, want to show you the very long built uh, uh, black-tailed goblet uh, track, uh, trapped in our station. And so it was very interesting to share the, our experience with uh, Bingrunju about the Bahoy species. So thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>